Welcome here to Orange County, California, just a few minutes away from Disneyland. I'm Pastor Carol Dana, and I'm so delighted to be with you today with Living Life. You know, God's with us in the triumphs and in the tragedies. And as we wind up this chapter 11 of Judges, we will see how God works and how God um, takes and uses some of our most difficult circumstances to bring about his purposes. And so as we look to this portion of scripture and reflect on the life of Jephthah, somebody who was an unlikely God, choice by God, and how we should also find ourselves in the same category, we can be assured that God has purpose and plans for us. He said that he chose us before the foundations of the earth. So whether you are in triumph today or you're facing tragedy, know that God is for you and he is not against you and he is going to deliver you and bring you into a place of victory. Open the scripture with me to Judges chapter 11, and let's finish up this triumphant portion of scripture. Judges chapter 11, verses 29 through 40. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah. He crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mizpah of Gilead, and from there he advanced against the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, If you give the Ammonites into my hands, whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Then Jephthah went over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into his hands. He devastated twenty towns from Ararar to the vicinity of Minith, as far as Abel Karamim. Thus Israel subdued Ammon. When Jephthah returned to his home in Mizpah, who should come out to meet him but his daughter, dancing to the sound of timbrels? She was an only child. Except for her, he had neither son nor daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and cried, Oh no, my daughter, you have brought me down, and I am devastated. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. My father, she replied, you have given your word to the Lord. Do to me just as you promised, now that the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the Ammonites. But grant me this one request, she said. Give me two months to roam the hills and weep with my friends, because I will never marry. You may go, he said. And he let her go for two months. She and her friends went into the hills and wept because she would never marry. After the two months, she returned to her father, and he did to her as he had vowed. And she was a virgin. From this comes the Israelite tradition that each year the young women of Israel go out for four days to commemorate the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite. Here we are in chapter 11 of Judges, verses 29 through 40, and we see that little word again, then, what, then what? Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah. The Spirit of the Lord came on him after he had made those negotiation he tried to negotiate with the enemy, but he would not allow the enemy to take advantage. He spoke the truth. After he established the truth of God's word, he then passes over. It says he crossed and he advanced against the Ammonites. We have those opportunities that we cross over the enemy's line and we say enough is enough. You know, you draw the line in the sand with the enemy and you say, enough is enough. I remember uh, our daughter at one of our daughters, we have four daughters and a son, and she went through a time in her early 20s of just walking in rebellion against the Lord. And I remember one morning I woke up and I was so angry at the enemy. And I said to the Lord, I said, today and from now on, every day I'm going to find a 20-something-year-old girl and I am going to share my faith with her. I don't care where I am when you put it on my heart. And for every day that the enemy tries to keep hold of our daughter, I'm going to take somebody from the kingdom of darkness. And I remember that day I walked into the local bagelry, and as I was in line, a young girl came behind me, and I turned to her and I said, 
how you doing today? And the tears began flowing from that 20-something-year-old girl's face. And she said, well, not too good. And I said, what's going on? And she said, I'm on my way to tell my parents that I'm pregnant. And I'm so sad because I've disappointed them. And I talked to her and I said, well, you know what? God sent me here today to encourage you and to let you know that when you turn to him, I led her to the Lord that day. She gave it to the Lord. I ran into her a few weeks later and she said her parents had embraced her and she was going to church with them. You know, the enemy sometimes, he thinks he has that upper hand, but we draw the line in the sand. I drew the line in that sand. And when our daughter came back, fully surrendered to the Lord, and her and her husband, I remember the Sunday they dedicated their little girl to the Lord. And you know what? Everybody that came with them to the baby dedication, they all received Christ. <laughs> Don't you love that? When we say to the enemy, by God's grace, I'm putting a line in the sand, and that's what Jephthah did. Okay, enemy, you won't give us a land that belongs to us. We're going to cross that line, and we're going to advance against you. He spoke in faith. He stepped out, and the Spirit of the Lord came on Jephthah. I've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in my life, even as a young girl, where his presence would surround me. I shared the story yesterday of when my husband was so sick and how the presence of the Lord came upon me. You know, he experienced the presence of the Lord, but yet he was not wise because he became over exuberant. And maybe he thought he could negotiate with the Lord. And he makes this vow. You know, you give me this victory, you give me the victory. And whatever, when I go, the first thing that crosses my door at my house I'm going to sacrifice to you. Now, let me state this clearly. God does not, does not support child sacrifice. He abhors child sacrifice. His heart breaks for the millions of babies that have been aborted on the altar of self and on the altar of convenience. That breaks God's heart. This was not God's doing. He was overzealous. He should have stopped and waited in wisdom and not thought he had, had to negotiate with God because God had already run, won the battle. God did not ask this of Japheth. But we see he wasn't perfect, and we see the outcome. He goes into battle. The Lord gives him the battle, the victory. What happens? He goes home, and what is the first thing that walks out the door was his daughter. Now, I, in studying this, and I'm sure some of you, you know, you, you look at this, I don't really know what happened. I know it wasn't God's will for him to sacrifice his daughter. Um, there's many people, commentators, that believe perhaps that he really was just uh, take, saying that she would be a virgin the rest of her life and she would serve in the temple. I don't know. I know it wasn't God's plan. It was a rash decision. It was a rash vow. It's a good indicator. We shouldn't make rash vows to God. Take your time. When you're in the presence of the Lord, wait on the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Don't try to get ahead of him. Those ill-considered vows are not honoring to the Lord. This is a tragic outcome to what would have been a very amazing victory. The victory was nonetheless. But remember this. You cannot have spiritual victories with carnal efforts. Write that down. That's something we need to remember. You cannot have spiritual victories with carnal efforts. And we also need to know that humility is a great strength in battle. Jephka, after that, became one of Israel's judges. One of Israel's 18 judges. He, he sporadically governed God's people from the time of Joshua. Jephthah was used mightily of the Lord. It says he was a mighty warrior. Despite rejection, despite being outcast, Jephthah rose up and he met the purposes of God, although he had some failures, as we all do. But he knew that when his eyes were on the gate, he kept his eyes on the gaze of Jesus and he looked to the Father. He found himself victorious, as we also will, when we keep our eyes on Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith.
Oh, what a joy to know we have an eternal hope. May the God of hope fill you today with all joy and peace and believing, and may you abound in the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you join me as we go to prayer today and we ask the Lord to give us great faith as we face our battles so that we also can be mentioned in portions of scripture like Hebrews 11 where it talks about those in the great hall of faith. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. By faith, the prostitute Rahab welcomed the spies and was not killed with the disobedient. And he goes on to say, I don't even have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson and Jephthah about David and Samuels and the prophets who through faith did mighty things through God. Could you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we pray that we, like these great warriors before us, these faithful servants, would be able to do mighty things for you. Help us do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We're reminded of the scripture that says, I can run through the troop and I can leap over the wall. Lord, whatever troop we need to run through, whatever wall we need to climb, give us strength, Lord. Give us wisdom. Let us experience your presence in such a way that we will be emboldened to go into battle victorious because we serve a mighty God. Amen.